Mr. O'Hara, welcome back to my channel. So I'll be updating you regularly again because I figured out the technical issues, sort of. Um, my iPad is all weird and I'm going to eventually have to get it fixed. But as of right now, I found a temporary solution. Apparently my, because th like, there was no sound coming out when I made videos. But apparently when I put headphones in, there is sound. I, that doesn't make sense to me, but I don't know anything about technology because I not technically I'm technologically stupid that's what I call it I don't know if that's the term for it but oh well <laughs> okay so um I did a live show a live uh reading sprint recently um, um I did a few like three of them one on Beach Bump Bookworms channel one on a mess great chicks channel and then one on um my channel and it looks like we might be doing that kind of as a weekly thing. We're all more free on the weekends. So it looks like it'll be Beach Bum Bum. As of right now, how it's fe it looks like it's going to be Beach Bum Bookworms channel on Fridays. Um, Mess Great Chicks on Saturdays and mine on Sundays. I'll, about, I'll be doing mine on Sunday or uh, uh, morning, uh, noon, Central Standard Time. Um, and then I don't know if they are going to do the same time every week, but I think so. But I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I'll give more updates about that. Um, I know for sure that we're doing Beach Bump Bookworms um, this weekend, mine this week. Um, I'm not sure if Mask Chick is still doing one on Saturday this week, but uh, we'll figure it out. But, so you should definitely tune in on those. If you want to be productive on the weekends, actually get reading done, then the three of us have kind of set up this thing, and they're always, and we're all, you know, if you want, ever want to join in on one, and not just as a viewer, but, you know, then um, we're are willing to add more people if you want to be a part of it, that'll be fun. So yeah, just a little update there. Um... But moving on to this video, which is a review, I've been procrastinating it, but not that long, actually. I've procrastinated reviews longer. I, it's not that I don't like making reviews, it's just they're not my favorite video to make, but I still want to review these books. So sometimes it just gets a little more energy for me to get and actually review one of these books. I know there was a couple books a few, few months ago where I procrastinated a while on making those reviews. And then I finally was like, you know what, I need to make these review videos. Um, but yeah, I'm going to change up a little bit how I make the reviews as well. Um, so that should be fun. So I'm reviewing The Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel. The first book is The Alchemist. This is a Harry Potter spinoff that I, and I don't think many people know. And the, uh, many Harry Potter fans actually know exists. And the ones that do aren't, a hundred, I don't think are 100% sure if it has to do with the Nicholas Mel that's mentioned in Sorcerer's Stone because he's like the creator of the Sorcerer's Stone and he's immortal. And this is a prequel because after Sorcerer's Stone, um, they, Harry and Dumbledore were talking about how Nicholas would die with, uh, with, since the stone was destroyed. Um, so this is definitely a prequel, but not that much of a prequel. It's not like centuries in the future or in the past or anything, you know. Um, actually, um, it's not by J.K. Rowling either. It's by Michael Scott. I think that's another reason why Harry Potter fans don't exactly know of its existence. But if you're a Harry Potter fan, I definitely recommend this. I absolutely, I really do enjoy not as much as Harry Potter. But it's still good and definitely deserve a read if you want to know more about Nicholas Fumel and the Sorcerer's Stone and all that. Because um, the Sorcerer's Stone is mentioned a few times in here. But basically... It starts out with these twins, Sophie and Josh. They, m their parents are archaeologists, so they move around a lot. And Sophie and Josh never really were able to hold on to friends that much. So they are really close. That's not the only reason. They're just, you know, naturally close. But they're just really close with each other. They're each other's best friends. And, they're, and that's one of my favorite things about the series, is how close the two of them are, how their bond is. And it's beautiful. But, um... Uh, Nicholas and uh, his wife Paranel uh, are 
obviously main characters this is about Nicholas Melp. There's also a lot about Sophie and Josh and Paranel. Um, but basically, uh, basically, they get attacked like at the very beginning. The, uh, Nicholas, uh, Josh works with Nicholas um, at his book uh, bookshop, and Sophie works across the street. They end up getting summer jobs, but Sophie works across the street at a coffee shop, and Paranel does not own it. Uh, she works with Nicholas and Josh at the bookshop, but Paranel's always there. So, you know, so Sophie and Josh got to know Nicholas and Paranel, even like them. And then they find out all these secrets about them, and Josh stops trusting them, and even though Sophie still trusts them. And, yeah, it's, it's this big mess. But they get attacked by someone named Dee, and he brought golems. And then all of a sudden, Sophie and Josh are both, um, uh, introduced to magic, things that they didn't think existed and then they were all and then one minute everything was normal and then next all of a sudden they were thrown into this war and they are just 15 year old kids and they were just thrown into this war and then um so they end up having to go on the run and to hide away from D and then Nicholas uh, admits that he's been suspecting that they are the twins of prophecy because the reason why D wanted is attacking Nicholas is because he serves the dark elders. The, the elders are the people who basically created the earth. And um it started out with the dark elders. It started out with the elders and then there's the next generation elders. And yeah. So and then humans were invented and the dark elders are the ones who want things to go back to the way they were and doesn't like humans. Sees them as slaves and stuff. Which uh, Nicholas explains at one point. I think he explained that in the second book, though. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. And then um, the other elders um, are, you know, uh, don't really interact with humans, but still see their purpose in the world, I guess you could say. So, yeah. And you meet several elders and next gener generation. Um, Dee serves the elders and the dark elders. And, um,. He wanted the Codex, which is a book that Nicholas and Paranel are guarding. And it's also where their um, immortality potion is for them to keep, you know, being immortal. And uh, Dee was able to steal it, but Josh uh, took the last two pages. And because of it, uh, it was the last summoning, which is something that D desperately needs, so he he so D is constantly after them to uh, get them, and eventually he comes to the same realization Nicholas had already come to was that the D, that these twins were the twins of prophecy, and there's this uh, there's several prophecies from uh, Abraham the Mage who created the Codex, and um, and uh, all of his prophecies always came to pass even if they w weren't what you thought they were, and. And these twins were a part of the prophecy. I can't remember what the prophecy said, but exactly. But um, uh, one gold, one silver, something like that. And let me think. I don't remember. Um, uh, and one to save the world and one to destroy it, something like that. So, yeah. And... Um, there's a lot about auric magic on here, like your auras, and they're all different colors, and everyone has a different aura. No, like a snowflake, no aura is the same. And um, Josh has a uh, gold aura, and Silver has silver. What did I say? Did I say Sophie? I don't think I said Sophie. Did I, say? I don't know what I said. I don't know. My mind's not here, apparently. Sophie has silver or and silver aura. And the gold one is a little bit more rare, but both auras are extremely rare. Um, t because their cores are also pure. Most people's auras have, um, a, like, make a mixture of colors. And, uh, a pure aura is hard to find, especially a gold or silver. And a gold is just a little bit more rare, as they explained it. So, um, yeah. And that's fun. <laughs> so, they end up going to a shadow realm to... Oh, uh, wait, first Nicholas ends up recruiting Skathach.
I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce her name. I'm just going to call her Scatty because that's what they usually call her. Uh, that's what the twins call her, at least, because I don't think they can pronounce it either. <laughs> um, but Scatty is a next generation, and she's also a vampire, but there's different types of vampires. Uh, there, there's some that uh, drinks blood and eats flesh, and she's not one of those. But she's a vegetarian. Uh... I just got an uh, image of Draculaura. It made me think of her <laughs> from Monster High. Um, but yeah, so she's also one of the fiercest warriors in, that the world has ever seen. Nothing has been able to defeat her. There's only a couple of really, really powerful mystical beasts that even came close to being able to defeat her. But the, even they still couldn't do it all the way. So yeah, she's powerful. And she's known as many things. She's known as Scatthatch, obviously. Then there's, um, or Scatty, as her nickname is. And then there's, um, I don't remember all of them that they listed off. But uh, the two that I remember, because these, those are the two that are used the most, are the Warrior and the Shadow. Um, so yeah. And then they end up going to um, Hecate's uh, realm, and she's a one of the original elders, Scatty's next generation. And they wanted her to awaken the twins' powers, and at first she didn't want to, but then she ended up doing it, and she awakened Sophie's because Sophie's like a tad older, so she, it, the tradition is to do the oldest first. And I love how protective Josh is of. Okay, my iPad is about to die. Let me plug it in real quick. Okay, better. Um, that's what I was saying. Uh, I love how protective Josh is of Sophie and how so motherly Sophie is to Josh at times, and it's just really cute. Like I said, I love their bond. But um, there, uh, they do have a few. They're not really fights or disagreements. I don't know what they are, but there are a few times where they don't aren't clicking, and it's after they get awakened or after Sophie gets awakened, because D ends up attacking the Shadow Realm with some of the most more powerful Dark Elders, and they do end up killing Hecate in her entire Shadow Realm. Um, Sophie was unconscious because her awakening took a lot out of her. And then Perinelle, who was kidnapped, which I forgot to mention, she was uh, kidnapped right after they first attacked. And so she uh, end up uh, using some of her energy to go through Sophie because she figured out Sophie was just awakened and she was able to um, scare off one of the most powerful and fierce Dark Elders and uh, Perinelle is, yeah, <laughs> she is fierce, almost as fierce as Scatty herself, so yeah, um, that's amazing, but um, so uh, Sophie was able to Sophie eventually woke up and Josh was terrified of losing her, you know, and then um, they end up going to the Witch of Endor and um, her, uh, which is Scatty's grandmother actually, and uh, that's where uh, they would teach Sophie the power of air, the element of air because she needs to learn all four elements and they still need to awaken Josh's power. But um, so the the wish ended up giving her, showing her, teaching her the power of air, giving her, giving it to her, giving her the power, and was able to, and also uh, gave her her memories and her thoughts, so that they were jumbled up in Sophie's brain. And for a while there, it was hard for her to tell which what were her thoughts and what were with the blah, 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 blah. what thoughts were the witch of Endors, and she knew uh, all of a sudden knew things and remember things that happened long long before she came to be so yeah that's fun always <laughs> uh i lost my train of thought um so yeah that's fun um let me see what else was there uh, they end up getting attacked. Uh, Josh was uh, at the park while Sophie was doing all that, and um, and Dee ended up talking to him, saying Nicholas isn't who he thinks he was, saying that Nicholas is the bad one, that the Dark Elders could bring paradise 
this and that, and um, Josh doesn't trust Nicholas anymore, especially since he's put Sophie in harm way, harm's way so many times with the awakening, because it's hard, because the way they, sh the way that he, because since they were in the rush, uh, he bade Hecate to do it a different way, a more rushed way, which is also a more dangerous way, and then um, with uh, these, uh, to uh, get her to uh, learn the um, and master the power of air um, that could be also dangerous so Josh doesn't trust him anymore or like him and so uh, he actually was listening to D and he didn't know which one to believe D or Josh or D and Josh D or Nicholas because uh, D says Nicholas is the bad guy Nicholas says D is the bad guy but at the same point D has never liked him that's where I think that's where his it never said for sure but I think that's where his dilemma was. Nicholas lied. Nicholas kept a huge part of himself away and put jo Sophie in harm's way many times. I mean, so I mean that putting her Sophie in harm's way was technically Dee's doing too because Dee kept attacking them, including Sophie. But still, you get my point. <laughs> but yeah, so that's fun. Um. And then uh, they, uh, the witch is blind, and she can see people through mirrors. That's why her shop has so many mirrors. Uh, and uh, one was kind of used as a legate. I almost forgot what it was called. It's called a legate, where you can step through it and be somewhere else. And the witch made it so that when they would step through it and be in Paris, which is actually where Nicholas was born and was uh, raised up until, you know, uh, after he became immortal and he had to start keeping the codex safe he had to run away from d and the dark elder so he had to leave paris but he uh um so nicholas stepped through immediately followed by scatty and then sophie was still oh uh, i forgot to mention before that uh they did have to fight d before they could escape and d had raised an army of the undead and Sophie couldn't find Josh. He he was still at the park. He was kind of in a. He kind of hypnotized him, so he wasn't much of help at yet. And then Sophie um, was able to use um, was able to create fog and uh, whirlwinds like tornadoes and stuff to stop to defeat the undead. But she was taking it was taking up a lot of her energy and she was getting weaker. And it's bad to use all of your aura and energy at once, or really like something like that. Especially since she's still training, and you know. Um, but then she ends up screaming, and uh, I don't remember why. But Josh ends up, that wakes Josh up from his little daydream. He and he um, was able to help and get them away. And he ends up carrying Sophie because he keeps having to carry Sophie because she keeps being unconscious and hurt and stuff like that. Well, not really hurt, just kind of unconscious and. In a daze, I guess, you know, like, no energy anymore, quite literally. Like, when people say, I don't have any energy, it's usually, well, I guess sometimes it can be used literally. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. So, uh, and then, let me see. So, they stepped through the leg gate, and then Dee went back to the shop, and was, and everyone was in the leg gate but Josh. And he, he felt left behind again. Considering now he's the only human, because they don't no longer see Sophie as humans, that she has all these abilities now, and he still hasn't been awakened. And he's jealous. So, 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 um, he was like, "See, you're left behind. They left you. This and that." And then Sophie steps back through. It's like, "Come on, Josh, let's go." And she, he was like, "You came back for me." And she's like, "Of course, you're my brother. You're my twin." So she grabs him and pulls him through. And then the witch stops um, D before he could jump through the leg gate. And ends up blowing up the shop but both her and D end up being just fine uh, of course so that's pretty much how the book ends them going to Paris right that's how the book ends That's not how it ends. Oh, yes, it is. No, it's not. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, th that's not how it ends. It ends with... Um, 
uh, Paranel, because she's been um, transported. To, cause she's the she's a prisoner. She's been transported to Alcatraz, and she's been imprisoned there, and she's being guarded by the Sphinx, which is a uh, deadly creature, and uh, it's, it feeds off of people's power and energy, and making them weaker. And um, and he said that once they kill Nicholas and have and kill the twins and have the rest of the codex that uh, the Dark Elders gave her permission to finish feeding off Paranel. But Paranel's not afraid. She's taunting her and this and that. So yeah, that's how the book ends. So yeah, it's definitely a great read, especially if you're, you love Harry Potter and want to learn more about Nicholas Fennell. This is a really good uh, story to do. I absolutely love Paranel and Sophie and Scatty. They're probably my favorite characters. I love Josh too, um, but he does get, and I love his how much he cares about Sophie. Yeah, like I said, that's my favorite thing about the series, their bond. Um, but yeah, I do love this um, series. It's so good. I definitely recommend it for any of you who, you know, if this sounds interesting to you, then definitely check it out. Um, I like how it kind of, there is explaining to be done, obviously, but I like how it kind of got into the action kind of at the beginning because the book starts off with Sophie at the coffee shop and then all of a sudden she smells something weird and then it shows Josh in the bookstore and he smells something weird and then he sees Nicholas performing magic in the attic and then all of a sudden Gollum start attacking and magic's being flown everywhere and Paranel and Sophie run. That's what another thing I loved at the beginning. Um, the, the fight broke out in the bookstore store and Paranel was currently at the um, a coffee shop and then Sophie s explained the smell she heard and because he, everyone has a different smell, their aura does. Um, Sophie's is um, I, a vanilla ice cream and Josh's is oranges and um, uh, Dee's is raw egg and sulfur. So they were so when um, Sophie explained that jo uh, Paranel knew and knew that Nicholas was being attacked at the bookstore and when so and then so she ran and then P Sophie knowing that Josh was over there and could be in danger she, and she had no idea what she was go getting herself into she had no idea uh, she saw golems attacking men of clay and she saw magic being thrown out around she knew that if she ran in there she her life would be changed forever she could get hurt she could get killed but she did not care her brother was in trouble and that is all that mattered like I said I I can't say enough. I love their uh, relationship. So yeah, definitely check this out if you want a mystical, magical read. And if you're a fan of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and Nicholas Mel, then definitely check it out. You would not be disappointed. So yeah, uh, that is all for this video. Uh, please like and subscribe and comment down below if you've read it, if you want to read it, and we'll chat below. And you can follow me on Twitter, Bookstagram, and Goodreads at Secret Books. And I will talk to you guys later.